everyone and welcome back to Prisma Chats. Today I am talking to Tassin Ishmam, who is a developer success engineer. Hello Hi. Tassin. Hi. <laughs> How are you doing yeah, I'm today? I'm doing great. Like I've had a great day. What about you? I've had a great day myself. Just had some really nice lunch. Cool. <laughs> um, yeah, so let's <laughs> hop right into it. So, uh, could you please introduce what you do on a day-to-day -day basis with uh, developers? Success? Right. So, uh, my role at Prisma is to help other developers use the tools we make in Prisma. So, right now, primarily our uh, most popular like offering is the Prisma ORM. So, on my day-to-day, -day, I help people like understand how to use Prisma. Uh, and its technologies uh, solve their problems, their like debug issues, uh, teach them, help them understand best practices, that kind of thing. So that's my main responsibility at Prisma. So besides that, I also maintain a project called How to GraphQL, which is uh, something that uh, Prisma created with the help of a community uh, some time ago. So I think though that's mm -hmm. more or less like the main two things that I do at Prisma. Awesome. And isn't the second thing like a nine, ten part um, project that you're working on? I, I think I heard yeah, you so, say something uh, about How to GraphQL that in our is a website that's that for teaching huge. people, well, how to use GraphQL. So we have a lot of tutorials on the website uh, of how to use GraphQL with various kinds of technology stacks. So, like, how to use it in the back end, how to use it in the front end, how to use it with like different languages like Golang. JavaScript, etc. So right now I am working on a tutorial series of using GraphQL and TypeScript in the back end. So that is something that should get released sometime this month or next month. So yeah, I'm really excited about that. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah, that's pretty fascinating stuff. That's a really cool project that you're working on. Uh, and I can't wait to see what it turns into. Um, awesome. So tell me, how did you actually get started with all, all of this uh, engineering, developing this whole field? Right. I started doing software development uh, in my first year of university. So I was mostly just like trying to explore different things at the time to really find like what clicks for me. So uh, I started with like mobile applications, uh, specifically Android development, which was cool. But like then I discovered the web, and I really fell in love with that. Like, and like I haven't really looked back. So uh, I have been doing web application development ever since, and it's been some three years or so, possibly like almost four years at this point. Wow. Okay. And you're pretty young. Like, aren't you in university? Yes, uh, I'm in my final semester. I'm doing a degree in computer science and engineering. Amazing. And uh, what would you say are the biggest differences between like a university life and a company uh, environment? So like right now, like all of it is sort of in Zoom. So it's mostly just shifting mm -hmm. from one Zoom meeting to the next. But I think like the biggest mm -hmm. difference would be like, like at work, I feel like there's a lot of opportunities for self-actualization, which is super cool. Like. I can work mm -hmm. on real world projects and do things that impact people, developers, and even like users, uh, like on a day to day basis, which is something that like really excites me. Awesome. My biggest cha uh, change was uh, actually like the feedback loop. It's not like you're working towards a project and you see the end result and it's awesome and how it contributes to a company whereas at university it's just like here's a packet of stuff here are these theories do some work on that and then we'll give you some one-sided feedback and uh well that's just my personal <laughs> experience and i really really prefer the company life and i would i'm not going to trash talk <laughs> uni it absolutely prepared me for a company environment and to be prepared for all kinds of feedback and stuff but just um yeah, that self-actualization, as you said, is so much more consistent and so, do I want to say potent in a company environment? Yeah, I guess it's much more yeah. like a parent, um, I would say. Yeah, yeah. So tell me, what's your biggest challenge at Prisma? Right, you? so uh, I think my biggest challenge in general has been to like sort of both juggling university and office commitments, things like mm -hmm. exams and big events at like Prisma 
but often require like my full attention. So you really have to be mindful and plan around those things because you have like competing sort mm -hmm. of commitments. And so planning, communication, yeah. and like ensuring you don't procrastinate till the last minute is really, really important. But like fortunately, like yeah. my team and manager have been super flexible and understanding about this. So this has been mostly manageable for me. This is one of my favorite things about working here is that people get to have their space. They're given the opportunity to like balance these two really overpowering commitments in yeah, life. Yeah, absolutely. And it's not an easy thing. Like I've done, I've done the juggling situation. It's it's not the most simple thing in the world and I'm honestly uh happy that that is behind I me. I understand. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, so like the flexibility really helps. Yeah. Here. Mhm. Mm yeah, so hopefully after you're done you'll be able to feel like a weight has been lifted off your shoulders <clears throat> and you'll be able to focus on more stuff. Yeah, let's see. I'm optimistic. That's not necessarily work. Yeah. So tell me, what do you like most about working at Prisma? Mm. So I think like the most like favorite thing aspect of like Prisma is like I love the culture and energy here. Like everyone is just very nice and accommodating. Mm -hmm. Like there's a real se sense of teamwork and you really feel that your teammates have your back. So yeah, I really love like the sense of cooperation and community like that's I like I receive from almost everyone at Prisma across all the different teams. So that's awesome. I felt the same. Like I joined like just a week after you yeah. and it was so <sighs> it was <laughs> like, very refreshing. You just feel so welcome. You feel like you're part of the team on day one and I've never experienced yeah, that. Yeah, I think like uh like um, like your teammates really like make the effort to make onboarding smooth because like again uh like starting mm -hmm. out is always very intimidating and stressful so like everyone really do their best to make that process as pleasant and like as frictionless as possible which is like really great yeah and i mean i saw this meme that said well it was actually a tweet but it was a meme it went joining a company is like being a new character in the fifth season of a series <laughs> <laughs> and that was so true in my case. I don't know if it was like that for you. I think it's for everyone. Yeah. So honestly. like, uh, so in Prisma, like, it, what really helps is like almost everything is documented on the company wiki. Like we use Notion. So like, yeah. so you get like a lot of spoilers from season one to four, uh, just scrolling through, <laughs> <laughs> scrolling through the wiki. Yeah. The wiki. Yeah. So that that really helps to get like yeah. get the context aligned. Yeah. Indeed. So uh, you were talking about your big project. Would you say that that's the most exciting project that you've worked on so far? Or is it something else? So I think that's like, it's definitely the most, what I'm really excited about right now uh, at Prisma, like uh, doing, working on something that like lots of people will hopefully like see and learn from. So I feel like that's like a really valuable undertaking. But again, like since it's still like something I'm working on, it's also not possible for me to like really talk about in high inside like how, what the project, like what my learnings from that project ha will be and how it ranks up to the things that I've done before. So I think in mm -hmm. terms of like most fun or exciting project I have worked on, I would say is uh, this COVID awareness project that I worked on like around March last year. So this was like at the onset of the mm -hmm. COVID pandemic uh, in my country. So it's this website called Corona in Bangladesh.com. And it was made by me and a few other friends to sort of spread information and awareness about the COVID pandemic. So at that time, wow. yeah, so like at that time, there was like a lot of anxiety and misinformation online regarding the virus itself. Yeah. And so we really wanted to create like an information outlet that caters specifically to the people of Bangladesh. So like in our own language, in our own sort of cultural context. So and the response we received was like super, super amazing. Like I remember we had like some 25,000 <laughs> unique visitors on like day one. So uh, it was like a lot of fun. 
yeah, like just keeping it alive was a huge challenge, but it was like really exciting, like working on it, like, getting feedback, uh, like doing new features, and like even collaborating with other groups to enrich the content on the website. So that was definitely like a really great, uh, fun project for me. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> and you kept this a secret from the DevRel team this oh, whole no, like, time. We haven't like really updated the project uh, in a while, so like it's kind of out of date right now. So I'm a bit like embarrassed to share it. Right, but still, <laughs> you made a whole thing, and you had 25k people visit on day one. That is a huge accomplishment. Uh, yeah, yeah, thank you. Wow, it was, it was like <laughs> I'm kind of still wrapping my head around <laughs> how you and your friends did all that. <laughs> yeah, lots of coffee. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. no, tech life what's new <laughs> right so what is a uh, technology that gets makes you most excited it could be anything tangible or intangible right so i am actually really excited about the work we're doing at prisma like shameless self-plug <laughs> so a lot of people like, know <laughs> us as like a sort of orm company but our vision and offerings mm -hmm. are like rapidly expanding so an ORM is part of that vision, but there's like so much more. So we're making like a lot of mm -hmm. like big advances to make data more accessible and easy to work with, both for like individual developers and for organizations as a whole. So like this is a really exciting space and I would like recommend people to like really watch for the development that's hap developments that's happening here. I can only agree. You all better watch <laughs> out <laughs> for Prisma. Yeah. There's, there's stuff yeah, coming, exactly. okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, so speaking of Prisma, do you have a preferred stack that you like right. to use? So I'm mostly a backend person. So my preferred mm -hmm. stack is like very simple because like, you know, like there's like a safe technology choice. So I use a lot of TypeScript, Postgres, PostgreSQL uh, as a database. And then for my preferred web framework, I just like default to like the Node.js sort of standard express so yeah nothing super fancy but it gets the job done awesome i don't have any further uh, agreements <laughs> or comments to that <laughs> um, yeah so when you think about yourself starting out or other people that are just starting to enter this world of programming coding languages databases what would you advise them to touch upon first good question so i would actually say that it almost doesn't trap matter like what you pick just pick something and like stick to it right so like python javascript c plus plus whatever excites you learn it and like make something and like initially it will there will be a learning curve so you will f feel confused and frustrated but like it's important to sort of like carry through like, and uh, once you get comfortable working with these things, it gets much easier to learn it, like adapt your skill set to something new. So like, I think the most important thing is to like apply what you learn and like stay curious and stay excited to like keep working on it. I started personally like programming with C, uh, which is like a very low level systems language, but you could just as well start with something very high level like Python uh, or JavaScript. Like it's totally fine. And uh, what I would advise though for uh, people starting out is to sort of be mindful of what the best practices are in that sort of domain and to learn them because mm -hmm. it's very easy to retain bad habits that you pick up initially. So like try to use like just the basics, try to use descriptive variable names, write, try to write modular code, uh, write comments, uh, learn like version control, get familiar with Git, stuff like that, I think is important even as a beginner. I would say especially as a beginner. So that would be my advice to people mm -hmm. starting out. Yeah, that was um, really wholesome and wonderful advice. And hopefully the people watching are retaining that and hopefully they find these videos and are inspired to something. Uh, we have a lot of wonderful stories from all different kinds of people, from Prisma and especially from the technical aspect. I'm hoping that the viewers at home have learned something, got inspired, 
Uh, and thank you so much to Seen for joining me today. Thank you for inviting me. Um, yeah, of course. My pleasure. Um, thank you. And I'll see you in the All next right. one. Bye. Bye. Have a great day.